Always fresh, every day. You're watching Fast Lane Daily. Volvo releases the much anticipated S60. A new supercar manufacturer preps for the fastest production car title. Bugatti takes the lid completely off the new 16C Galibier. And what the hell is the former McLaren F1 designer Gordon Murray doing in that prototype? He's in our internet rumor mill and announcing a new car. Here's a hint. It's electric. Okay, that wasn't really a hint. Kind of just gave it all away altogether. Okay. Anyway, I'm Derek D. You are watching Fastlane Daily. Oh, and FLD Tours today is a Mitsubishi Lancer Sportback with yours truly. We're living in the fast lane, baby. Tuning in the fast lane, daily. Today, Volvo released the first official images of the long-awaited 2010 S60. Set to make its official debut at the Geneva Auto Show in March, the S60 has undergone some radical design changes over the outgoing model. Volvo has only released a couple of these teaser photos with very little information on performance. But Volvo CEO Stephen O'Dell had this to say, quote, The all-new Volvo S60 is sculpted to move you. It looks and drives like no other Volvo before, and the car's technology will help you be safer and more confident behind the wheel." End quote. The only bit of technology that's been revealed on the new car is the pedestrian detection system that Volvo has been working on for the past few years. It monitors pedestrians on sidewalks and streets and will automatically stop if the car detects a person approaching in the path of a vehicle. But what about dogs? Well, no other figures or specs have been released on the Volvo, but we hear IKEA is running low on supplies of Swedish meatballs. Hopefully by the LA Auto Show, we'll get that fixed and get more info on the car. Wow, that's a great joke. In the past few years, we've seen a few manufacturers claim the new top speed record for a production car. Bugatti hit 253 miles per hour with the Veyron, the SSC Ultimate Aero hit 257 miles per hour, and now there is a new contender on the block, Keating Supercars with their TKR. There is still limited information on the new supercar. All we really know is that the car is powered by a modified 7-liter GM-sourced LS7 V8 that puts out 1,800 horsepower. Yes, 1,800. According to their recent press release, Keating has spent the last month on a dry lake bed in California doing high-speed tests, and at one point in those tests, they hit a top speed of 260.1 miles per hour. That's three miles per hour faster than the Ultimate Arrow's record. The company plans to head back to the flats soon to run the tests again, hopefully this time in both directions to claim a record ruling average for the Guinness Book of World Records. In related news, JF just got the Guinness World Record for worst joke of all time with that previous Swedish meatball joke. I'm serious, the Plex just got delivered. And we've talked about it a few times and have only seen a few shots in the dark of it, literally. But now we get to see the Bugatti 16C Galibier four-door concept in real life. Well, not us personally, but our friends over at Autoblog did, and I have to say, it is B-E-A-U-tiful. Bugatti's first modern four-door will most definitely be the only car in its class when a production model arrives in 2012, and with a $1.6 million price tag, that shouldn't be too hard to achieve. The Galibier concept has a very modern style, but you can definitely see the classic influences of the original. The interior is very roomy and super simplistically classy. Write that down. And even has a removable clock that conveniently turns into your wristwatch. How classy. Yep, right there. Ian, look at that. That is nice. As of right now, it shares the same goods as the Veyron, an 8-liter W16, but no turbos. Instead, it's got twin superchargers. An 8-speed transmission is also expected, but the all-wheel drive horsepower figures haven't been released yet. Wow, Ian, this car literally pisses elegance. I mean, if a car could piss, it'd be pissing elegance. It is super, super nice. And in the internet rumor mill, McLaren F1 designer Gordon Murray has teamed up with Zytec Automotive to develop a new urban city car for the environmentally friendly. Over the next 16 months, Gordon Murray Design and Zytec are planning on testing four prototypes boasting a 26% emission reduction when compared to the nearest EV rival. The latest of these designs, the T27 model, has been claimed as the world's most efficient electric car. Designed from square one and not using other known systems or technologies, they are stating that these new three-seaters are the best we'll see for the future. There have been no facts or proof of these so-called claims, so we're challenging you, Mr. Murray. Let's see you deliver like you did with the F1 more than 15 years ago. Bring it. And I mean bring it. I, I mean actually bring it here. 
to our show so we can drive it around, I don't know, maybe go grab a beer, say hi to the kids, whatever. Bring it. Yeah. Right, Ian? Come on. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Next up, I talk about the new Mitsubishi Lancer Sportback and FLD Tours. That's up right after this. Derek D. doesn't know is that we've switched his regular cup of morning coffee with sulfuric acid. Oh, son of a bitch! Oh. Always fresh, every day, Fastlane Daily. Some may call it a hot hatch, some may call it a hatchback, but Mitsubishi calls it a sportback. That's what this is, the Lancer Sportback. Kind of has like a shark face. I like sharks. So let's go swimming today on FLD Tour. I'm in a 2010 Lancer Sportback Rally R. 237 horsepower, we'll hit you with the specs later. You know, that's not my scene. The Lancer Sportback Rally R is basically a watered down version of the Evo. Now we all know the Evo is like the quintessential street rally car. This, you know, it's not claiming to be one, but it's definitely like one. It rides pretty high and the suspension is stiff, which it should be in a car like this. Also, it's got the, uh, you know, the twin clutch SST gearbox, so you could shift plus or minus right down here on the shifter knob, or you got your paddle shifters. Now, there's one thing when you're in auto mode, it, it kind of revs too high when it's changing gears, but it, then again, this car is made to be manual. So that just might be the computer in the car, you know, revving it too high. But if you do it yourself, you know, switch gears whenever you want, so that's a good thing. I like the driving position of this car. It's comfortable. The steering wheel is comfortable. One thing I don't like about the steering wheel, though, is that when you first get in this car and it's brand new to you, and you got the paddle shifters in your way and the steering wheel here, it kind of blocks the windshield wiper controls and the light controls and the blinker controls. This car is loaded. You know, it's got the HID headlights. It's got the Recaro racing seats. But if I'm paying 31 grand for this car and I'm not actually racing it, like how many people are going to buy this car and actually go racing? So I understand that, you know, the Recaro racing seats are comfortable, but I want them to go up and down too, not just forward and back. That's just my own personal opinion for a car I'm paying 31 grand for. I mean, a Passat CC isn't in the same class as this car. If you could buy a Passat CC for 27 grand, the interior is way nicer. And now that brings me to the gauges. Really nice, colorful gauge right in front of you next to, you know, your speedometer and your RPMs. But pan over here, you just got a regular red digital readout of your whole radio. It would have been nice if they carried out, you know, the whole colorful display here, right here as well. Mitsubishi, come on, man, 31 grand. Give it to me. I want it. I want the display, maybe even touchscreen. Put it in. I kind of see this car being like a spoiled high school kid's car. I mean, I don't know too many high schoolers driving around a $31,000 car, but you know what? There was always those few when I was in high school. So overall, I like this car. It handles well. It's got good pickup. Basically, it's the same thing as the regular Lancer Rally R, except this is a sportback or hatchback or you know, whatever you want to call it. The looks of it, I like. I really like the looks of it. I'm giving it an eight out of a 10. The interior, on the other hand, we're looking at a 4 out of 10, and that's me being generous. All right? So that's my thoughts on the Mitsubishi Lancer Sportback. And uh, yeah, that's about it. F that guy. I'm out of here. Nice, Derek. <laughs> you suck. What is with that sky blue hoodie? It's the worst. See everyone, I beat you to it. Nice. Anyway, subscribe to FL Detours. That's youtube.com slash FL Detours. That episode will be up tomorrow. All right? Well, that about does it for Fastlane Daily today. I'm Derek D. Remember, facebook.com slash Fastlane Daily, twitter.com slash Fastlane Daily, and anything else you'd like to add? YouTube.com slash Fastlane Daily. Nice and simple. All right, everybody, you have a lovely Tuesday. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Aro. For Sharo. I keep the semen with me. It's only perfect. Ow, we're living in the fast lane, baby.